And I presume that the minivan is not your husband's car? No, that's mine. Then I'm afraid the problem still exists. It shows here that the van is completely paid off, making it an asset that you fully own. Yeah, that's actually something they can't take from us. The issue is, if you own over $1,000 worth of assets, then you don't qualify for assistance through this office. Now, if you wanted to sell the van and put the money towards your debt, then we could reevaluate your case after that point. Sell the minivan? But how would my husband get to work? We would provide you with city bus vouchers. Wouldn't that cost the city more tax dollars? Wouldn't it be more logical if we kept the van and paid our own transportation? Only if you owed money on it. Well, we don't. And if we sell the van now, it would be impossible to replace. Our credit is a mess. Right, which is why we would provide you with city bus vouchers. You would just have to come in once a month so that we could review your income status and make sure you're still eligible. And if we get a little ambitious and make too much money, you'll take our city bus vouchers away? You have to remain eligible in order to continue receiving assistance, yes. And if we sell the van, we have no way to get to work, leaving us with no choice but to stay below poverty level. Do you see what you're doing here? I understand your point, and I'm not arguing its validity. But these are the rules. The rules? Who made these rules? Has anyone questioned their motives? I thought the system was designed to help hardworking people who needed a temporary boost. But that's not it, is it? It's designed to trap people when they're down. And for the rest of us, we have to cut ourselves off at the knees and become completely dependent upon you, even if it costs the city more tax dollars. You're not helping people. We sit around and complain about people living off the system, but you're the ones keeping them there. You know what? You keep your little stance.